good magic hour tea link is down below i love that tea so much <laughs> hello i'm gonna let this cool off a little bit more hello makers and welcome back to a new vlog it is so good to be back and chatting and catching up with you. I hope that you had a beautiful August and that you're heading into an equally beautiful September. I have so much to share with you today, some progress on some knitting, as well as a old whip, and yet new because it's been so long <laughs> since I've picked it up that I picked up again recently after I did a big reorg of my whips and stash and did a D stash as well to make room for new stash, <laughs> which was a stash acquisition to share with you all in a new pattern. I also have some cross stitching to share with you. I have some progress made on my recent, uh, my most recent Halloween ornament that I've been working on. And we're gonna be choosing together my next ornament to work on throughout the month of September. And then I have some shop news, some new things that are coming to the shop, the big fall and Halloween update, yearly update, and some big changes coming to the shop as well. There goes said sock that I'm gonna show you here in a second. <laughs> so without further ado, I think that's a sign. Let's get into it. Grab your beverage of choice. I've got my lovely tea here and let's catch up. Ooh, and here comes a flock of geese just in time. It's not a vlog without a visit from our friends, right? <laughs> so straight into knitting since she was wanting to make an appearance. <laughs> I've got a half object done, my first sock that I cast on last month or at the end of July actually. This is the zigzag to fall pattern by Deb Buckingham, who is also knit on designs as well. I'll take it off the sock blocker so you can see the pattern, but you can really see it well here actually. Beautiful, fun zigzag pattern. I wanted something that was kind of jazzy and fun, um, kind of Halloween vibes because I was embracing the joy of summerween <laughs> earlier this summer. And I chose a a uh, sock set that I picked up at Lambtown last year, uh, last October, by Mermaid, Happy Mermaid Yarn Co. Here's their ball band here. Again, everything that I mentioned is down below in the description, links to all of the makers. Um, this is a sock set uh, called Scream and Treats. It came with this really cool, vibrant uh, green, and then the speckled yarn right here. And this is a fingering weight yarn, 75% uh, superwash merino and 25% uh, nylon. So your real standard, lovely base for socks. The mini skein is the same as well. Here is the, I'm gonna be able to make several pairs of socks, I think, out of all of this yardage. So here is the main color. And then here is, I've already got the second sock cast on. I think I have about two more rows I need to do of the cuff. This is, I'm doing it top down, which is a shocker if you know me. I love doing toe up socks, but I'm, I'm going with the flow here. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I love this green. It's so much fun. It reminds me of like Oogie Boogie vibes, you know, from Nightmare Before Christmas. The pattern is beautifully written. Can't recommend Deb's patterns more highly. I can't wait to make more. Um, I have several in my queue, <laughs> and I love a shorty sock. The majority of her patterns are shorty sock, of sock patterns are shorty socks. I did a traditional, um, as per the pattern, I'm just kind of going straight with the pattern, not making any modifications. Um, a traditional heel flap and gusset with the eye partridge uh, heel flap. And then I did a one by one twisted rib. In hindsight, I actually should have done a stretchy cast on, um, which I haven't done that often because I do tend to do a uh, toe up more and then use, I think it's Jenny's, Judy's, surprisingly stretchy bind off. It is a rounded toe, um, which of course I did a contrasting yarn for that as well. Um, not my favorite fitting toe for my feet, but 
it works it goes in the shoe it's fine <laughs> i did make these for me because especially um with the, the less stretchy uh cuff um it's not gonna really fit my mom as easily so next uh pattern that i make by deb i'm gonna be using a stretchier cast on um but yeah and then of course i'll share the deets with you when that time comes but they fit really beautifully i really love the pattern it's so potato chippy so intuitive um and again the pattern is written so clearly and beautifully um it's not a chart i don't believe there's a chart i have it actually pulled up right here i love doing my ipad because then i can like highlight and mark off where i'm at um but yeah you do a basic rounded toe and then you do a kitchener stitch which she had a link to knit witch which was on youtube and i think it said it'd been on there for 17 years which is amazing and i tell you there was something about going to an old school knitting tutorial on YouTube that just portaled me back to 2014, 15 when I started knitting again. And I learned through YouTube uh, primarily. And it just, the vibe of it was slower. It was just so crystal clear. And it just got me so excited to start learning new techniques again. So, um, I pause there because it'll make more sense of like when I share some changes that are coming down the pike here, but I'm going to have some time, I think, to start exploring and watching some of those old school tutorials that were just so lovely. For Kitchener Stitch, I tend to go to uh, uh, Pearl Soho uh, written, I believe, instructions. I think there's also video as well, but I really liked this one. It was very clear and you do like the whole Kitchener Stitch with the person teaching it which is really lovely too so it's nice and slow and steady it reminded me of the uh, shows that were on PBS back in the day that I just like absorbed because I could still get access to them and so good so it's not the best looking Kitchener stitch because I I can't even show you where it is because I don't know because <laughs> I don't do it that often I don't know what it is it's I mean I've talked about this for years I'm not gonna wax poetic about it it's just one of those things it's not logical why I don't like it I just don't like it I prefer toe up but it's not gonna like stop me from making a beautiful pattern like this so there you go there's my hoe <laughs> my half object and then again I have cast on uh, the second sock and I have a couple I think a couple more rows before I start the beautiful zigzag pattern again so very cool I'll grab another little sip of my tea here mm -mm. this is the sun tea blend which is a special series that magic hour is doing i'm not sponsored by them i'm just like a total complete fangirl <laughs> um and i love their tea so much it's so beautifully blended um and it's a little bit like a little bit crispy this morning oh yeah we'll share a little bit of weather talk if you will it's been fake fall here in sacramento where i live um but that is changing as i expected next week we're coming back to triple digit um which we haven't had in some time so i think everybody's kind of like oh here we go um but i'm i'm preparing for it i think the transition of between two seasons is always really hard but this one in particular is always the worst for me because it's summer to fall. It's just like a big, huge difference in weather climate here. Um, and it's happening later and later and later. And so I've been really trying to, especially this year, I talked about it a little bit during summer ween, like both prepare for uh summer and fall and like heed the call of the excitement of that but also like embrace the warmer weather and the actual season that's occurring right now um but i just know like even when the first day of official fall happens september 21st i believe it is this year um it's still gonna be really summer weather like Lambtown is a festival in dixon california just south of where i live and i'm so looking forward to it this year i can't wait i'm hoping to go one day for a good chunk of the day we are having my nephew's 
uh, birthday is the same weekend. He's going to be eight, y'all. He just started second grade. Can you believe it? If you've been watching the vlog for a long time, since the beginning, before just before he was born, it's banana pants. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, I'm excited to go to Lambtown this year, at least for one full day. And uh, it's always really super hot. So maybe we'll be blessed by the weather gods. It'll be a little bit chillier, but it's not gonna be full crisp fall until mid uh, to late October. So we still got a little bit of time. However, the trees are starting to shift and change a little bit. I've been seeing it on my walks. And then of course the geese have been coming back a little bit earlier this year because I live over a migration path uh, for a lot of birds, uh, specifically geese. And yeah, it's been lovely. But enough weather talk. Let's get back to some nitty goodness. Mm -mm. So as I mentioned, I did a big de-stash, uh, which a lot of it is still up in the shop if you're interested, but I did promote it over on Instagram where I am pretty much daily if you're interested in between vlogs. Um, but uh, of what I'm up to, what shenanigans I'm up to. But uh, yeah, I needed space, y'all. <laughs> I didn't have enough space for all of the beautiful yarn that I got in last year at festivals, including last March at the final stitch, uh, Stitches West. I still needed to put away all of the beauties that I received or purchased there the, for the most part. Um, and so, yeah, I did a big de-stash of yarn that just was ready for new homes to be used. Love the yarn, um, but just, it, you know, it had been so long and some of, I kept a lot. I still have a lot. I still have a lot in bins, don't you worry, but I need room for new stuff as well because tastes change and all that. Um, and in the process, I also finally some old whips, some things that had been finished and I just needed to clean out the project bags. You know how it is. Sometimes you finish and you just have like, I don't know, I do anyway. I have like the project bag and I still have like the ball band and the swatch and the remnants of the yarn and everything still in there and it just needs to be processed. <laughs> so I did a lot of that as well, as well as throwing out some stuff that wasn't in good condition and just needed or had bad juju <laughs> needed to be f sent into a new place. <laughs> um, and then I rediscovered, actually, before I get to stash acquisition, I'm going to show you a whip that I had in the back of my mind that I wanted to work on again. And I picked it up again the other day. And it is my Anna Sedora shawl by Lindsay Fowler. And this is a a uh, pattern that you can make using um it's specifically written in mind using advent yarn or you know advent box yarn so 24 uh mini skeins uh usually think it's about 20 grams is what it's written for but of course there's variations and you can stash bust and all kinds of stuff it's a really fun witchy fall vibes shawl and it's very potato chippy once you get into the rhythm of swapping out the colors i'm doing the version where you use two different colors for a pattern repeat and then you use one of those same colors and then the next number up uh and you continue on processing so it's kind of fiddly uh, especially because that's the version that I chose to make which I am sticking with because it's beautiful um, but it means that you need why I put it down initially is that you need really long stretches of time to like sit and you know coordinate the two different yarns that you're gonna use and there's a lace um, well, you know, lace, uh, kind of row, um, and yeah, you just have to really concentrate on it. It's not as easy as like picking up a sock project, even the beautiful patterned one, or like some, like even a cross stitch project like that, although it's kind of comparable, I guess, to kind of cross stitch as well. So here it is. I love the fringe of it. Oh, so cool. And so I think I was about... My, I didn't move my progress keeper up, but I think I was about here when I started it up again. So I've done a few more rows, not too much. I had to get, kind of find my place too, because it had been so long and I didn't mark where I was. I was using a printer pattern for it, which I have in the bag, but I think I might switch back over to my iPad. I go back and forth 
based on how like my brain is working but it's eventually you'll um, I will trim the fringe so that they're even um, but oh my gosh I love it so much it's got total Stevie Nicks vibes to it and it's gonna be perfect for the fall maybe next fall <laughs> but at some point in fall at least it's fun to work on during the fall um, and I've got this progress keeper I'd put on there is a little cheeseburger by Sucro Sucro Miniatures. I got this several years ago, but I have a ton of her stuff. So, so much fun. And that was the other thing as I was finding a few more notions, some needles that had been in, you know, forgotten whips that I was able to put my whole, one of my needle sets completely back together again. And then I found my Maker's Keep, I think is what it's called by Coco Knits. It's this magnetic slap bracelet that you can use for cable needles. And, you know, they even have like other notions that you can put on it, like a stitch counter and all kinds of stuff. I kind of want to add to it now that I found it, but I had lost it. And I was like, where is it? Which is unusual for me to lose things because I am total Virgo organized lady. So I was thrilled when I found it. I promptly shared the joy over on Instagram. <laughs> so yeah, but I picked this up. Now again, it's kind of fiddly. So I need a longer, I, I discovered I have to wait until I get like a little bit of a longer stretch of time to really like focus on it because you can see in here, it's just like a beautiful grab bag. It's one of my old bags for Stranger Things. It's like a beautiful grab bag of of uh, balls, <laughs> of yarn balls that I lovingly, speaking of organized uh, Virgo freakazoid, <laughs> I numbered all of them, which, you know, you can see the process of me doing it on uh, Vlogmas. This is yarn. I didn't even tell them what the yarn is. I'm rusty. This is uh, yarned by Plies and Hellhounds. This is uh, one of her past uh, uh, advent boxes and um, just uh, so dreamy, all of the colors. So, and I believe the pattern either came with the box or it was like a coordination, like collaboration between Lindsay and Gabby of, so pretty cool. But yeah, I, I've picked it up when I have a long stretch, as I said, I'll pick it up again, but it's, it got bumped up into the queue of things I can grab out of my whip basket, which is a little bit more manageable now. You know what that sound means? Stash acquisition. <laughs> so I think I didn't mention this in the last vlog, but uh, earlier in July, um, Pacific Knit Co. Um, came out with a new doodles pattern. She's great uh, patterns that are um, just have to do with like different pieces and you can mix and match, you can make different things, use it on a yoke of a sweater, all kinds of stuff. And I have yet to make anything uh, by her, any of her patterns, but this one jumped out at me online when I saw it on Instagram and it was a new desert doodles pattern and specifically the infinity cowl. And I've been reconnecting with my Arizona roots as of late. I went in 2023 to visit my godparents. I was born in Tucson. Um, and so we went to Tucson to visit them and I just fell in love. We went to the Sonora Desert Museum and I've just been gravitating towards like cactus themed things here and there. It just feels very homey and full circle and wonderful. So when I saw this pattern, I was like, oh my gosh, it's perfect. It's like something to keep me warm, like in the winter, hopefully when we go visit them again, because I just heard that direct flights are going to be happening from Sacramento to Tucson next, starting next year, I believe, which is so exciting. Um, but yeah, and so I decided to get the pattern and I decided to get, treat myself, to get the yarn that um, by Yarnaceous, Yarnaceous Fibers that came with it, the Doodle Cowl Kit Desert Oasis Colors. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna take this out, pause for muting the crinkling. All right, so I took them all out so I can show you this beautiful yarn. So this is in the Bronto DK weight yarn. Oh, look how beautiful. 
This is like my favorite color. Uh, this, these are 50 gram skeins and they're 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon. And then they're 123 yards each one. Look at, and it has like a little bit of a sheen on it. So pretty. So this is the Desert Oasis, as I said, set. This color is uh, Saguaro. And then we've got this beauty, which is uh, Chola. So pretty. And then this is Desert Barrel Cactus. I have this pale green color. And then we've got Dry Whiskey. <laughs> this reminds me of old Tucson. <laughs> kind of old West vibes. And then we've got Whisker, whoop, Whisker Bush. It's like fun, you know, like when things are starting to bloom, the cacti are starting to bloom. And then we've got prickly pear. Oh, I love this one. So pretty. And then finally, we have a claret cup cactus. I love this one too. So pretty. So yeah, so there's got a little bit of a, I don't I want to get them too out of order here, but here's this beautiful little set. So when will I cast this on? I don't know. <laughs> I think I want to get through kind of probably November maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I need to get through the big bulk of sewing. I'll put these together afterward. But I need to get together. I need to get through the big bulk of sewing for my shop and stuff. Um, but I think it'll be a really lovely like November cast on. Plus there are some other things that I really want to finish up. There's like a fall themed cowl that I want to finish up uh, that just needs finishing. Lots of little finishing kind of things. So I'm going to be focusing on that. But I love that I have this and it's ready to go. And it's just, is there anything more fun than new yarn? I mean... Yay. Now I can access it. It's not in my Monica's closet 3.0. <laughs> so, yeah. All together again, nice and tidy. It. I have to say it's just lovely <laughs> to be able to know what is in these boxes again and to be able to like, I'm ready for X project and just grab it and go. Like it's ready. I don't have to like dig through stuff and feel overwhelmed and it just happens that creeps up on on you every once in a while it just takes a little bit of time it took me about a I would say like about a day to kind of reorganize everything and then of course to de-stash and put everything up online and everything I also had some quilting kits that I put up that I had mentioned I think in the last vlog because mom's doing a similar de-stash kind of situation because she's swapping her bedroom and her craft room and um, which is going well by the way and uh yeah it just feels good it feels like you know you you release into the world things that still bring you joy but you're ready to release and then you just have more room to welcome in new things so it's lovely it's a circle of yarny life <laughs> oh getting to the end of my tea it's getting cooler but that's okay because it's getting warmer cross stitch so i finished except for putting on the sequins and I was so wanting to like get to the point where I get the sequins on my one-eyed Jack by Satsuma Street but alas lifey stuff oh that looks like it's my head <laughs> so much fun but oh my goodness it's so cute here's what he's uh or she is gonna look like when all done I can't wait to do the fish uh like fossils instead of the skull and bones it's like fish so funny so just need to put on uh, the sequins and a bit of back stitching as well and then I'll cut it out and plop on some sticky backed felt and do a little bit of tacking around the edges uh, I've done several of these so I know it'll take me about let's say about a good solid hour to finish everything up um, but it's something that I need I need to do at a table and need to have good lighting and also just be in that space where I can do kind of fiddly work and I just haven't been in that space or had that time um, 
since I finished this little gal, I'm going to say gal, I know it's Jack, but it could be Jacqueline, right? I think it's because I finished a book recently by, um, oh, I can't remember the author's name, but I'll put it up here, but it's called The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi, and um, I just finished it actually the other day. I ended up listening to it on Audible uh, because I just couldn't focus on the page. I was trying to read the a physical book that I had gotten last year and it was also just really heavy I've been having carpal tunnel and I still have been having issues and stuff so I just have to really be mindful of uh, how long I hold heavy objects and so I switched to the audible which was great and I listened to it at 1.3 speed <laughs> so I got through it and I would give the book a three star it's not like one I mean, I wouldn't like not recommend it, but I wouldn't like, I'm not going to be like shouting it from the rooftops, if you will. Um, the story didn't really pick up pace until it's like about a female pirate. And so the story didn't pick up until maybe about halfway through the book, in my opinion. And I didn't feel like kind of invested until around that point. And then even then it still was like a little bit of a slower pace. Um, so it was the writing was good and the story was good but it just the pacing wasn't what i was looking for <laughs> so yeah so interesting it'll be interesting it says it's the first in a series i think another one is coming out uh next year so i would be interested to like on audible at like a high speed to see how the the story is going to continue because it did leave at a place where it could continue and i really liked that it, it's not really well maybe it is a spoiler I can't see but it's very the characters are very diverse and it has really good representation so I really enjoyed that as well I'm always loving when stories are showing the world that we live in <laughs> so it was just yeah it was it was interesting but that was like my little pirate vibes happening and now y'all let's together pick my next that's the easter ones but let's pick the next halloween ornament together here i i'm just gonna go like this let's do it Ooh, another owl an owl was like my first one. Oh my gosh how cute so this is gonna be my next one that i make because my halloween tree you guys is gonna go up just a few weeks I put it up uh, usually after my birthday um, which is just before the first official day of fall so that I can enjoy it year-round so I'm excited for that so I'm gonna finish this one up by the next time we visit and have started this guy and then of course as I said I'm over on Instagram just about every day so if you want to see the progress in real time you can go over there but leading into is that what's next into some shop news here um i think i'm gonna have some more making time here pretty soon in the next couple months so cryptic i know but let's get into some shop news all right i had to take a little bio break from all that tea <laughs> in my oven but also to get situated to show you all of the things that are coming to the shop or are available now in the shop uh first i wanted to say thank you all so much for those of you who got a holiday box um those are already in the works and tristan and i of uh, dragon horde yarns she's doing the yarn this year for the yarn boxes there's also a cross stitch box and um we are so hyped i uh, finally decided on some fabric um and um yeah we were titillated and excited it's elf themed so it's the inspiration is thriving <laughs> for this holiday box it's going to be so much fun um i am also deep into uh making things and putting things together for the fall seasonal boxes which will be going out in just a week and a half ish um but if you're watching this in real time so stay tuned for that if you're a seasonal box subscriber and then the final seasonal box uh, for winter will be renewing in uh, late september based on your renewal date if you're a subscriber and they'll be going up uh, for everybody if you're interested um at the end of September, I think, is when I'm going to do it. So stay tuned for details uh, for that over on the newsletter. 
um, and that will be the final seasonal box. So, and they're nature themed, so it's very different from the holiday box, which is very Christmas uh, holiday season themed. Um, so it's been a lot of fun, but more about that later on at a later date. But without further ado, this year's fall and Halloween collections, uh, project bags, I'm gonna go through them um, fairly quickly because there's five of them, um, but I do want to show them all to you because they turned out so good, y'all. This is my favorite update every year. Um, and by the way, I did like a little mini um, summer update if you will um and some of those bags are in the shop those are ready to ship these bags for fall and halloween which i do pretty much every year is their pre-orders and that's to make sure that everybody can get the bag that they want um, they will be shipping these pre-orders for fall and halloween will be shipping september 30th maybe a little bit earlier depending on when i get the fabric in hand from spoonflower which is where i order all of my fabric the majority of my fabric for the bags so um yeah without further ado these are uh three fall collections and then two Halloween collections. And there's uh, no rhyme or reason to them, just really what spoke to me. And there are several from a new designer that just has rocked my world. <laughs> and I can't wait to share with you. So said designer is this first collection. I always do a very pumpkin-y themed collection because I love pumpkins. And that is, I'm like, which bag to show you first? Is this embroidered cruel? pumpkin fabric called embroidered pumpkins and again these are all available now in the shop uh, available for pre-order and they'll ship on September 30th so this is the sweater bag and I have like little videos with a past um, version of a bag or past collection of a bag on the website if you want to see them in full detail but they've all got a handle they've got zipper pull tabs and they're nice and roomy and you saw like this is a past version of the bag when i used to do a different type of top fabric and quilters cotton and then linen on the bottom now i do a higher quality fabric that is it's hard to see because this printed fabric looks so real y'all it's crazy but um it's on a cotton twill so it's a little bit sturdier and longer lasting but look at these pumpkins aren't they so pretty gorgeous absolutely stunning stunning i'll take 14 of them <laughs> you know that meme from tiktok so we've got the sweater bag we've got the little notions bag so cute then we've got the sock bag is so adorable and I've been using did I already put it away where's she at oh yeah so here's like a sock bag in use this is from last year's Halloween collection so you can kind of see inside here it's perfect for a little sock project and then by the way I should say I automatically put handles on all of the bags but if you do not want a handle on the bag just put a note or a comment on your order you can always do that and I'll um, make note not to put it on there but in general it's just easier for the volume that I make for me to plop them on there and the majority of folks like a little handle so we've got the sock bag we've got the drawstring bag everything's box bottom for the most part and everything has Kona cotton uh, on the inside and my little stamp and then cotton twill ties and then uh, quilt batting is the interfacing. So it makes it like nice and sturdy, but you can also like squish it down for your bag. I still have to photograph these. <laughs> I'm Joanna from the past. <laughs> so I don't want to squish this too much so I can photograph it. Um, but yeah, so there's the, and I paired it with a really pretty cinnamon um, Essex linen for this one. So it's very pumpkin patchy. And then finally, we have the needlework pouch. So this is for cross stitchers and embroiderers and some people put quilt um, paper piecing in there or other projects as well. And it's got two pouches. It's got one for your main project. So it does like a standard 
um, like eight by 10 or sorry, eight by eight kind of Q-snap or embroidery project. You can also put these in there <laughs> really well. And then the front pouch um, is where you put like your floss card for all your embroidery floss and your notion so that they're separate from your project so you don't snag it. Um, but again, you can see more in depth kind of tours of, e of each type of bag on the website. So that's the embroidered pumpkins collection. Then I'm kind of gonna whip through these quickly because I do have some big news for y'all I wanna get to. So then I have what I am doing, let me get this here, for my fall leaves collection when I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and uh, ginkgo trees and ginkgo leaves are like my fall leaves for the most part. That's just, if you've watched the vlog over the years, I used to work in San Francisco and so those were a lot of the leaves that I would always share, and like B-roll, you know, and stuff like that on the ground. And so when I saw this fabric, I was like, that's my fall. <laughs> so I have some beautiful ginkgo fall leaves for you collection. Oh, so pretty. I just love the colors and it's kind of got like a 70s mod vibe. It reminds me of this um, dress that my mom had made herself and I confiscated and uh, used to wear and pretend I was going to dances and stuff when I was a little girl and we were living in Berkeley at the time so and probably saw these treat like you know so it's got good vibes for me but it's also just really really beautiful so wanted to make this into a collection got the notions bag we've got the sock bag We've got the drawstring bag and we've got the needlework pouch. So pretty. And I did, I, I've been uh, swapping it up and I've been using more color coordinated zippers. So this has a cream zipper on this one. Yay! Okay, and then the final fall themed specifically collection this one so i was not a girl scout i don't know why i just had it in my head i did not want to be a girl scout when i was a kid and it's something that every once in a while i really regret <laughs> not doing because i have friends who um were girl scouts and just you know i feel like i missed out on some skills there maybe even some social skills a little bit but hindsight's 2020 and when i saw this it gave like the nostalgia for that but also it's just super cute and that is autumn patches and this is by the same fabric designer as that embroidered um pumpkins fabric and i don't know how they do it but it makes it look so real so this is like embroidered felty kind of patches and it's got all kinds of stuff so you got the sweater bag You've got the notions bag, so it's got like, you know, autumn flowers, of course, like pumpkins. So cute. And it's got like marigolds and here's the sock bag. We've got the drawstring bag. Kind of reminds me of like jam lids or something, like things that you would like, you know, how people used to like hopefully they still do, like embroider or um, do cross stitch like jam lids that you would put on the top, right? I'm not making that up in my head, <laughs> but it kind of reminds me of that too. Here's the needlework pouch. So, so cozy, so fall. So those are a lot of fun. And then I have two Halloween collections. And this one, I knew I needed to do something super gothic because I'm a, and on dark fabric, because I am like, just loving how Spoonflower is finally printing dark fabric, like dark prints and designs. That wasn't always a successful or consistent thing in the past and they have really been rocking it. Like I did a Dark Academia collection earlier this year and I wanted something similar and I love skulls. Like I had a big thing for like Sugar Skulls and Dia de los Muertos because I used to do some concerts and stuff like that back in the day. Um, but I wanted something like super gothic, like Dark Academia vibes, if you will. 
So this is Gothic Florals. Spooky. <laughs> and this is the sweater bag, of course. Then you've got the Notions bags. And I'm trying very hard with the way that this... I don't do fussy cutting because I do production line sewing. However, with this particular fabric, I am doing my very best to at least get one for the most part skull on the notions bags just because it's a larger print there was another fabric that i got but i just ended up deciding not to do it because the print was too large um but yeah but this is oh, so i love it and just you know in person it looks the same it's just like spooky <laughs> i have a little bit of thread on there from I need to do a little cleanup before i do photography here in a bit but so cool. So that's a sock bag. Then we've got the drawstring bag. And then we've got the new work pouch. And I did black zippers for these. So extra spooky this year. And then finally, the final one. This is also by the designer that did the embroidered um, fabrics. And this is called Crochet Jack-o-Lanterns, I think is what I'm calling it. And it's like this crochet doily jack-o'-lantern pattern. It's so cute. So it's a sweater bag with the black zipper. It's got black Essex linen. Got the cute little notions bag. Again, I'm gonna do my best to always have like at least one jack-o'-lantern on there. We've got the sweater bag. The drawstring bag. And then finally the notion or the needlework pouch again with black um, zippers so yeah so those are all in the shop now they're uh, ready for pre-order and they will ship uh, September 30th um, maybe again fingers crossed a little bit earlier so you can get your hands on them but we'll see we'll see but um, yeah I hope you enjoy them. I am very much looking forward to making them all for you and getting them into your hot little hands for the season ahead. I'm gonna clear the decks here <laughs> and come back and chat with you all about some big changes coming. All right, so it has been just a little over a year since I decided to pursue my e-commerce my small business part of Stitching the High Notes, the shop full time. I've been doing it for five years now, just about to have the fifth anniversary. So, so since 2018, uh, I opened up uh, the shop part of Stitching the High Notes and have been making project bags since then. And it's grown and grown. And I've learned so much through the process of owning this business. And then the opportunity came last year for me to try it out full time. And I am so glad that I did. I've learned so much in this project, in this process. I've grown and I have learned that I love being a business owner. I love being an entrepreneur and I love a lot of the aspects of running a small digital business. And, um, that being said, I also learned, which I kind of figured might be the case, but you don't know until you try, which is that I really want my hobbies to be my hobbies again. This is a maker related business. I make and sew all of these bags. I am a one person shop. Sometimes I get a little bit of help from family, but uh, usually only at this time of year, which they will be helping out again this year. <laughs> um, but it's really, especially when you shift gears into it being your sole source of income and it being full time, um, do you realize, or I realized anyway, that I just really want my hobbies to be my hobbies again. I miss having knitting and sewing specifically and other things being an outlet for me. And it's really encroached, um, especially since going full time, um, it's encroached on my making time and my energy to make things like, you know, it bugs me that I don't have as much to 
a much finished as many finished things um not only to share with you all but just for myself first and foremost because i want to get on and learn like i was saying earlier i want to watch some of those videos and learn new techniques and i just one haven't had time but also haven't had the energy first and foremost to do it because at the end of the day after a full day of sewing or working on the business in any capacity because it's all creative which i love um uh, it's like the last thing you want to do is to pick up your ne needles most of the time. And then life has ebbed and flowed and changed as well. And I have other responsibilities and other things that take up time, which makes the time and the necessity to have an outlet like knitting and cross stitching and sewing garments and things like that um, so vital. And that's something I advocate for here on stitching the high notes to make sure that you are stitching joy into your everyday life and carving out time for your creativity and holding it precious. So I gotta practice what I preach, you know? <laughs> so with that in mind, I am gonna be closing the shop, just the shop portion. YouTube isn't going anywhere, so don't worry. But the shop portion of stitching the high notes at the end of this year, so at the end of December, just a few months from now. Again, all of these fall and Halloween bags are still in the shop, they're happening. Um, the holiday boxes are of course happening and are already in process. The fall boxes, like I mentioned before, are shipping very soon. And there will be the winter seasonal boxes to cap the, out the seasonal boxes. Um, but after that, um, that's all she wrote for project bags. And there might be a few little things here and there to kind of wrap things up um, by the end of the calendar year. But yeah, I think it's time to close this beautiful chapter of having this small online business. Now, what am I gonna be doing going forward where I have already shifted gears and have a new career path? I will be keeping that private going forward, but know that I am so, happy i am so happy and i'm taking everything that i have learned from owning this business and having a digital business and pouring it into what i'm going what i'm doing now and going forward and so it's a wonderful extension of uh having the shop and yeah i'm just super super happy and so extremely grateful for you all and i don't want to get ahead myself because i want to have a proper like send off and wrap things up in a couple of months here because <laughs> we're still chugging along <laughs> but i am so grateful for you all and for this opportunity to have this business for five years which is quite an achievement if i say so myself and especially to be able to say that I did it for over a year full time, which I am very, very proud of. And it's, um, yeah, I, I just am, am very much looking forward to fully being into the next chapter. I've already kind of started that process already. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share that with you all because I know some of y'all have been wondering. I will say also, I wanted to say a big thank you to my now alumni, uh, Patreon members. I did quietly close Patreon earlier this year because I wanted to start making this transition. Um, but several of you Patreon peeps um, are still in touch. We're really, I've grown some really long lasting friendships and a beautiful knitting group out of it. And I am so grateful to all of you all over the years who had supported me on Patreon for growing the shop portion of the business and yeah I'm very grateful for you all too as well so thank you again the youtube video isn't going the youtube channel isn't going anywhere <laughs> i am this is where it all started that i am committed to and want to share my journey as a maker um i started it when i was a baby maker baby knitter essentially and i'm looking forward to I'm hoping having more time and space to make again. And I feel like I'm probably gonna have even that much more to share with you all. So I hope you stick around <laughs> and I hope to keep inspiring you all. But yeah, big, big shifts and big changes, but very organic, very natural. And I'm very, very happy. With that, I've got my tea for a nice, 
toast and send off for this vlog. I hope again that you had a wonderful August. Please let me know and all of us know what you are making down below in the comments. I always love hearing what you are currently making. Um, and I hope that you have a wonderful September and that you enjoy the final days of summer and also winter if you are in the Southern Hemisphere. And I look forward to chatting with you all again very soon. And if you want to see the continuing adventure over here as I move through all of these changes and start to hopefully share more and more in the coming months of what I am making, be sure if you haven't already to subscribe, hit the old like button, you know, the drill with the YouTube algorithm and everything, but I would so appreciate it. And I look forward to chatting with you all again in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.